so uh, this is gonna be more or less my summary I was gonna write it out so but writing takes too long and it's annoying and I can never get my point across when writing because I'm just not that good at it anyways so I will get to the summary in a different video well I'm just recording my voice now putting pictures to it since I sent off my uh, camera and everything home already so I can't really do a video but I just want to get this done anyways so I created my story about 12 13 years ago in my head so uh, it does is impression by a lot of things that I learned then and so I'm going to reference like movies and other things to give visual examples in your minds on uh, how things work uh, the way they worked got created before I ever saw these movies and all that but it's just good examples you know so I'm not really stealing from anyone else it's just they conveniently had something which resembled what is going on in my story and um so I guess I can start with introducing the three major characters what's gonna make the story unique is most character uh, most books that you read has the major person and then you have some pretty major people and then you have some minor people give me a second there you go alright so with mine there is three distinctly major people so the story can be told through either one of their eyes or it could be told through all three of them or it could be told through just two of them. Well, so, the main character, the one that I followed through when creating the story, he, his code name is Prophet. None of the people in my story have actual names yet, but I'll get to that later. And Prophet, he was born about if you want to use standard time, 3,050 years ago, give or take. Um, he is someone who tries to make the world a better place, but doesn't really know how, and he's too stubborn to take anybody else's suggestions or opinions. So it's more or less his way or the highway. But everything he does is always with good intentions. In the beginning of the story, he creates big m monstrous machines that get used by the military for destructive forces, but was originally desi designed to study the use of magic which in my story is equivalent to like the string theory. String theory is uh, all matter and all that's made out of little strings, the most basic substance of everything. And in my story, magic, that's what it is, is being able to manipulate the most basic substance of everything. And so where the story starts off they don't know how to use magic they just kind of stumble across its existence so they're trying to study it and uh, Prophet he helps Guardian which is one of the other main characters um, study all this at the time they're not Prophet, they're not Guardian uh, they are standard names and so while studying this he kind of goes through a change he he gets visited by this higher force called prophet and 
that's what makes him into the uh, person he is now. So let me get away from this storyline. I'll go more on that once I get all the characters set up. And so the person he is now is he can see the future. And at first you're like, yes, seeing the future is really awesome. But it has its downsides because if you... Uh, the way he sees the future is he sees all the possibilities and he has to figure out which possibility is most likely to happen based off of which one uh, pops up the most. So he can't really determine what is practical, what is not. So it's, you know, what ifs. He sees the what ifs of everything. And that drives him into two different sides. Side A is his original self, where he does try to help everybody out, and he's attached to the world, it, and that's when he is like too busy to start looking at the future, where because he can only do one or the other at any given time, or he can kind of split it up, but it doesn't work that well. So. If he ignores the future and be himself, he's the, he's really quite normal per se. Makes mistakes just like everyone else, and has the best interest of everybody. But he also, when he starts looking at the future, he kind of loses attachment to reality. And when he loses attachment, um, he doesn't really look at what he does. He just looks at the overall goal. I mean, because when you want something done, it's going to take too much time to look at all the tiny details like who you affect, who you kill, and all this tiny stuff in his eyes. The bigger picture is how does he get X item to happen or Y. So yeah, so during this time he still tries to have the best of intentions for everybody, but it just doesn't quite work out the way he wants it to. It's... He loses focus, but at the same time, the overall picture gets done. So he relies a lot on his son to make sure that his overall focus doesn't turn into something evil, diabolical, or get taken the wrong way. And at, at first, the son doesn't really understand this task, but towards the very ending of the timeline, he really grasps the concept that it's his, that it's the son's responsibility to make sure that his father's insanity, as you want to call it, doesn't get the better of the universe because there is a billion ways to get a task accomplished and it's not profit who's going to be doing anything to get the task accomplished he's going to set it up so that somebody does it for him because he needs to make sure that the task does get accomplished and he can't n see if oversee it if he's doing the task himself so in life, there's many more evil ways of doing stuff than good ways. But who really gets to define what's good and evil? And so, throughout this entire story, you see Prophet take dips where he looks evil, and then you see dips where he looks good, and then you learn in the f later part of the story that some of the good stuff he did was actually bad and some of the bad stuff he did was actually good so it really messes up your perception on what's good and evil because you really don't quite know 